Previously, we talked about the age of the universe and how it could be double its age. But as we went through your comments, we got a lot of smart ideas and questions. And one of them was what exactly was there before the Big Bang. So we made this episode to discuss this idea and tell you that there was something there that could change everything we thought we knew about the origin of our cosmos. This is not a new discovery, but rather an idea and some suggestions based on the available evidence and theoretical models. And it's a game changer for cosmology. In this video, we're going to explore this idea and the story behind it, explaining what it means and why it's so special. So buckle up and get ready for a mind-blowing journey into the past, present, and future of our universe. To understand this idea, we need to start with some basics. How do we know that the universe is expanding? And what does that have to do with radiation? Well, it all goes back to the 1920s, when astronomers like Edwin Hubble observed that distant galaxies were moving away from us, and the farther they were, the faster they were receding. This implies that the universe is expanding, like a balloon being inflated. But if we rewind the clock and imagine the universe shrinking instead of expanding, we would eventually reach a point where everything was so close together that it was extremely hot and dense. This is what we call the Big Bang, the beginning of space and time as we know it. But how do we know what happened at the Big Bang? How can we see what was going on when everything was so hot and dense that light could not even escape? Well, there is a way. You see, when the universe expands, it also cools down. And as it cools down, it changes its state. Just like water can change from ice to liquid to gas depending on its temperature and pressure, the universe can change from plasma to gas to solid depending on its temperature and density. And when these changes happen, they leave behind traces of radiation. Radiation is basically energy that travels in waves or particles, and there are many types of radiation, such as visible light, radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays, etc. They differ in their wavelength and frequency, which determine their energy and how they interact with matter. But while some radiation is visible to our eyes or detectable by our instruments, other radiation is invisible or hidden by other sources. One of the most important types of radiation for cosmology is the cosmic microwave background, CMB. This is the oldest light in the universe, dating back to about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. At that time, the universe had cooled down enough that electrons and protons could combine to form neutral atoms of hydrogen and helium. This made the universe transparent for the first time, allowing light to travel freely across space. The light that was emitted at that time has been stretched by the expansion of the universe into microwaves, which we can observe today with special telescopes. This CMB is like a snapshot of the early universe. It shows us how hot and dense it was at different locations and times. It also reveals tiny fluctuations in temperature and density that were present at that time. These fluctuations are very important because they are the seeds of all the structures we see today in the universe. Stars, galaxies, clusters, and more. They tell us how matter and energy were distributed in the early universe and how they evolved over time under the influence of gravity and other forces. But what if we go even further back in time? What if we try to look beyond the CMB? What was happening before atoms were formed? Before electrons and protons were formed? Before even quarks and gluons were formed? Well, this is where things get really interesting and really weird. You see, according to our best understanding of physics today, there was a period in the early universe when it underwent a very rapid expansion called inflation. This happened before the Big Bang as we know it, when the universe was much smaller than an atom. Inflation was driven by a mysterious force called dark energy, or vacuum energy, or inflatant field, or whatever you want to call it. We don't really know what it is or where it came from, or how it works, but we do know that it had some amazing properties. One of these properties was that it had a negative pressure. This means that instead of pulling things together like gravity does, or pushing things apart like normal pressure does, it pushed things apart more as they got farther away from each other. This created an exponential expansion of space that lasted for a very short time, but increased the size of the universe by a huge factor, at least 10 to the power of 26 times, or maybe even more. Another property of this dark energy was that it had quantum fluctuations. 
This means that its value was not constant, but varied randomly from place to place and from time to time. These fluctuations were very small at first, but they got magnified by inflation into huge variations in density and temperature across space. These variations became the source of the radiation that existed before inflation and that was stretched and diluted by it. This radiation is called the inflationary background radiation, or the primordial gravitational waves. It is a type of radiation that is different from the CMB. It is not made of light or matter, but of ripples in space and time itself. It is like the sound of the universe stretching and snapping. It is very faint and very hard to detect, but it is there and it contains a lot of information about what happened before and during inflation. Inflation solved some of the biggest problems with the standard Big Bang model. For example, it explained why the universe is so flat, meaning that its geometry is not curved like a sphere or a saddle, but like a sheet of paper. It also explained why the universe is so homogeneous, meaning that it looks the same in all directions and locations. And it explained why the universe has no magnetic monopoles, which are hypothetical particles that have only one magnetic pole instead of two. But inflation also raised some new questions and challenges. For example, what caused inflation to start and stop? How did the dark energy decay into matter and radiation? What was the nature and origin of the dark energy itself? And what happened before inflation? Was there a singularity or a boundary or something else? These are some of the most fascinating and difficult questions in cosmology today, and they have profound implications for our understanding of the universe and our place in it, because they challenge the very notion of the Big Bang as the beginning of everything. You see, if inflation happened before the Big Bang, then the Big Bang was not really the beginning of space and time. It was more like a transition from one state of the universe to another, a transition from a state of rapid expansion to a state of hot and dense matter and radiation a transition that left behind traces of radiation that we can still observe today. But what was before that transition? What was before inflation? Was there another state of the universe that preceded it? Was there another transition before that? And so on. How far back can we go? How many layers can we peel off? How many transitions can we uncover? We don't know yet. We don't have a complete theory that can describe what happened at those extreme conditions. We don't have a theory that can unify quantum mechanics and general relativity, which are the two pillars of modern physics, but also incompatible with each other. We don't have a theory of quantum gravity that can tell us what happens when space and time become quantum. But we are working on it. We are trying to find clues and hints from observations and experiments. We are trying to test different models and hypotheses. We are trying to find patterns and symmetries. We are trying to find answers. And maybe one day we will. Maybe one day we will discover what really happened at the beginning of our universe. Or maybe we will discover that there was no beginning at all. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when we upload new content. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your attention and curiosity. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.